Okay, so we are going to finish off and we're going to be looking today at the last couple of bits. Okay, so we're going to look at the shortest distance between a point and a plane. Now, the formula book, you can't really see this, but there's a formula book page that looks a bit like this kind of thing here, which is stuff to do with vectors, okay? And you can see when you get this formula book page, there's certain things that we'll know about here. So this, we've got the, do you remember what this was called? It was the, oh no, this, sorry, no, 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 this isn't something that you guys have even done. So ignore that, this is in further maths, uh, this is in further pure one. So ignore that, please. Um, but this bit here is about the Cartesian equation of a line. We've then got some stuff about the equation of the plane. Uh, this stuff we would never use because it's, it's ridiculously over the top that you don't need to use that. But then there's a section at the bottom that says the perpendicular distance of alpha, beta, gamma from n1, x1 plus n2, y plus n3, z plus d equals zero. And then it's got a formula here about how you find the shortest distance between a point and a plane. Okay, so I'm going to now get rid of this and I'm just going to use this bit here that you need, okay? So, we are going to use this formula and you can find out about how this formula works if you want to find that another time, but I think it's not necessary at this point, okay? So we've got these three coordinates, sorry, the, yeah, the three coordinates and we've got an equation of a plane. Now, the annoying thing about their formula is that their value of d is when it's on the side when it's equal to zero, whereas our standard formula of what we do for an equation of a plane is when it's equal to something. So you just need to make sure that it's written in the exact form as that one that we've got there, okay? So the coordinate that we've got is three, two, minus one. In other words, that's alpha, that's beta, and that's gamma. And then we have two x minus three y plus z minus five is equal to zero. So we can then see that n1 is 2, n2 is minus 3, n3 is 1, and d is minus 5. Okay? And then it just becomes, uh, it just becomes substituting into the formula. So the shortest distance is this one multiplied by alpha. So that's 2 times 3. This one multiplied by beta, which is minus 3 multiplied by 2. And then this one multiplied by gamma, which is 1 multiplied by minus 1. And then at the end, you add on d, which is minus 5. And you'll notice they take the modulus of that. And that's just to keep it as, because distance doesn't make sense to have a negative distance. We just want to be able to say, what is the size of the distance? And then it's all divided by the magnitude of the normal. So that would be the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 1 squared. So the shortest distance is 6 minus 6, which is 0. And then you've got minus 1 minus 5, which is minus 6. But you take the magnitude of that. So it is just 6 over, just confirm where we did that, that's 6 minus 6, which is 0. That's minus 1 minus 5, which is minus 6. We just took the magnitude of it. And then I've got 9 plus 4, well, 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 4 is 14. So it is 6 over root 14. It's just substituting in. Now, I could spend some time with you proving this formula and, and going into depth with it, but considering the amount of stuff that there is to learn, this is something that I'd rather you sort of have a look at if you're interested in, but it's not going to be the most mind-blowing thing that we come across, okay? So we can obviously rationalise that if we want to, which is the same as 3 root 14 over 7. So shortest distance between a point and a plane is use the formula. It is in the formula book. It's a relief just to have something that's in the formula book that you can just use and be done with, okay? So that's for a point and a plane. Yeah, if we just quickly go back to this thing that we had over here. These ones, this one, this one, and this one, we did that strategy of, of finding a general point, blah, 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 using the dot product. So this one here, we use the formula. And this one down here, we use the formula. And I'll tell you how we use the formula for that. 
Like, yeah, it gives. Because the shortest distance between these two planes is the same as the shortest distance between a, a general point on that plane and the plane. Or this point and the plane, because it doesn't matter, because they're parallel planes, OK? So we've already figured out what to do if they're two parallel planes. Two parallel planes, instead, you're going to use the formula. Um, oh, where are we going? So this one we can do in a second if we want to find the shortest distance between these two things here. Um, we can clearly see, even though it's not in Cartesian form, you've just got N1, N2, N3, alpha, beta, gamma. What's the value of D? Minus 5. OK, so it's just can you substitute into a formula? I'm sure you can do that. So don't do that now, because we're going to do the next bit together. OK? The next bit is just to find the shortest distance between two parallel planes. So first of all, all you do is you find any point on the plane. I don't care which plane, but I usually would think about doing the one on top, whatever, really. So we're going to try and find the shortest distance between these two planes, which are 2x minus 6y plus 3z equals 9, and 2x minus 6y plus 3z equals 5. First of all, how do I know that these planes are parallel? They're multiples of each other, multiples, aren't they? they but they have a different uh, d value. If they had the same d value, then they would just be the same plane, OK? So this, again, links back into our idea of matrices and things. So these are these are going to be an inconsistent system, aren't they? They're definitely going to be inconsistent. So if you want to just find a general point that is on the plane, let's find a point that is on this plane. You can do this so easily. You can literally just pick any value for any of them that makes it all work. So can you spot one that's really, really obvious that's going to be on the plane? Zero is your friend here. Uh, when x is equal to zero. Okay, when x is equal to zero. Uh, y, is y is zero. And z is three. So here is a point that is on this plane. Zero, zero, three. If you wanted to, you could have done zero, zero and then y would have been nine over minus six but it's just kind of pick some points that just make your life easy right if you want to you could put one in different places but for this we just want to get we just want to find a point that's on the plane any point, any point that is on the plane because they're parallel to each other as long as i've got a point on a plane it's now just the same as the previous question so i've got this i'm going to find the shortest distance between these two things i want to find out the shortest distance between these two things. So I've got my alpha, my beta, and my gamma. I've got my n1, my n2, my n3. But careful, d is minus 5 for this one. So the, the shortest distance, sometimes I write out shortest distance just because I don't really like to use the letter d again when I've already used it, is I haven't got the formula. Oh, I've got it written down here, actually. So it's n1 times alpha, well, that's just 0, n2 times beta, which is just 0. I've got n3 times gamma, which is just 3 times 3. And then I add on d, which is minus 5. And I divide it by the modulus of the n vector, which is 2 squared, 6 squared, and 3 squared. So I get 4 over root 49 or 4 over 7. And that's it. The shortest distance between those two planes is 4 over 7. So you can try the question that was on the previous page and just use that with the formula. And then we're going to do question 5, 6, and 10 uh, just for like 10 minutes. 15 minutes and then we'll move on to the last part of this topic, okay?